everybody. Okay, welcome back. We are looking today at the subject of participles. We're in Jeremy Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek, and I'm looking at page 83, 84, 85, 86. And what I want to do here is to introduce the idea of participles in general. Um, you've got a fairly good introduction here from Duff, as usual, but we've got to be honest about it. The uh, topic of participles, when it's first introduced, tends to induce fairly intense levels of complete freak altitude among students. Because the truth is, it is quite a complicated topic. It is quite a big topic. But here's what we're going to do. I've got some good news. The way that we start this subject is really simple. It's not going to be that we do it by introducing all the complexity um, up front. The complexity is further down the road. But what I want to do today is to explain the basic principles of how participles work and why they work in the kind of way they do, and then just introduce some of the, the uh, features of participles in Greek which will help you to understand them. So first up, um, take a look at Jeremy Duff, if you've got it open, page um, 84, where Duff explains that a participle is a verbal adjective. A participle is a verbal adjective. And I just want to spend a couple of minutes, a few minutes really, explaining what on earth this means. What does it mean to say that a participle is a verbal adjective? Well, at one level, it's straightforward. It means that it behaves a little bit like an adjective and has some of the characteristics of an adjective, and also behaves a little bit like a verb and has some of the characteristics of a verb. So let's think about that in relation to this example sentence that I've got here <coughs> in English. Okay, the man saw the angels. The man saw the angels. So what's going on here? Very simple. Um, subject, verb, object, black, blue, red. And this is a noun, and that's a noun. There are no adjectives in here. But we could put adjectives in here, couldn't we? If we wanted to say, and here's the key thing about an adjective, if we wanted to say something about this noun we could put an adjective in to say something more about this noun. So we could say, for example, the wise man saw the angels, or the lucky, as Calvin wouldn't have put it, man saw the angels, or the frightened man saw the angels. And notice what all these are. These are adjectives. They are words that say a little bit more about the noun. They describe a quality of the noun. Similarly, you could do the same thing over here. You could, saw, you could say, the wise man saw the uh, beautiful angels. Okay, the wise man saw the beautiful angels. And you all recognise by now that what you've got here then is a, an adjective which is describing an attribute of the man. And another adjective which is describing an attribute of the angels. All perfectly straightforward. But here's a question for you. Suppose you wanted to say something else about this man who's seeing the angels. I'm going to get rid of these adjectives for now. We might need them later, but we'll get rid of them for now. Suppose you wanted to say something else about this man who's seeing the angels. We didn't want to describe an attribute of the man. What we wanted to do is to describe an action that he was doing while he was seeing the angels or before he was seeing the angels or something like that. In that case, we couldn't really use an adjective, could we? If we say the wise man saw the angels, wise isn't really saying something that the man is doing. Wise is saying something about a quality of the man. What we'd really like to do, suppose we wanted to say... Um, uh, that while the man was seeing the angels, he was also running, okay? So he's running somewhere. We want to put this word in, in such a way that it describes what the man is doing while he's seeing the angels. Well, this running comes from a verb, to run, okay? Obviously. It doesn't describe something that the man is, it describes something that the man is doing, it describes an action of the man. It's a verb, because it comes from run, 
But we want to use it to describe this noun like an adjective. It's verbal, and we're going to use it adjectivally to describe what the man is doing. The man, let's say, we might put it like this in English, the man, while he was running, comma, saw the angels. The man, while he was running, saw the angels. Can you see that this little bit here, the while he was running, is a little bit like an adjective, because it's describing the man, but it's a little bit like a verb, because it's an action, run, which is being ascribed to the man. That is a verbal adjective. At least it would be if we were to write this sentence in Greek. What we would do in Greek is simply to use the participle running. The participle, the verbal adjective, to describe the man. The man, while running, saw the angels, or the running man saw the angels, or while running, the man saw the angels. That's why a participle is a verbal adjective, because it does some of the things that a verb does. It comes from a verb stem, and it describes an action, but it does some of the things that an adjective does as well, in that it describes a noun. Now, of course, you could see how you would do the same thing if you wanted to, over here. Um, this would be attached to the subjects. You'd have to find a way of showing that with the participle. Come to that in a moment or two. But let's suppose you wanted to say that the man, while he was running, saw the, I don't know, what do angels do? Flying angels, slightly caricatured. And it's not really what angels do in the Bible. They stand around and they have meals with people, don't they? But anyway, let's suppose that that's what you wanted to say. So the man, while he was running, saw the angels while they were flying, or the flying angels. You notice what we're doing? It's the same thing again. We've got a verb, fly, and we're using it just to describe a noun. That's what an adjective does. So it's a verbal adjective. We would use the participle, flying, somewhere in this, in Greek, if that's what we wanted to do. So that's what is meant at the top of page 84 in your copy of Duff when it says that participles are verbal adjectives. They're part of the verb, that is, they are a verb stem, which is then conjugated in a certain way. But it behaves like an adjective. It does something that an adjective does. Now, what that means is that grammatically, a participle is going to have to have some of the features of a verb and some of the features of an adjective. If it's going to behave like a verb and behave like an adjective, it's going to have to be a bit like both of them. And that turns out to be exactly the case, as Duff continues. Like adjectives, uh, a participle must have a case, nominative, accusative, genitive, dative. It must also have number, singular, and plural. And adjectives come in three flavours, don't they? Masculine, feminine and neuter. So you're going to have to have all this times three, masculine, feminine and neuter. Now you start to see the first reason why participles start to get a little bit complicated. Because they come in one, two, three, four, times two, times three flavours, just because they're adjectives. So 4 times 2, that's 8, 8, 3, 16, 24. So that's 24 different forms that they're going to come in because they're going to have to have uh, number, case, and gender, just like adjectives. Now, you see the function of this, of course. This is going to be in the accusative case in Greek, while this will be in the nominative case. This will be singular. This will be plural. Um, and that means that the participles that qualify them, well, this one's going to have to be in the accusative plural. This one is going to have to be in the nominative singular, right, to match it in the sentence, just like an adjective would have to match it in the sentence. So it's going to have 24 forms because of that. But hold on, it gets more complicated, doesn't it? Because not only is it like an adjective, it's also like a verb. 
and verbs come in different tenses. In this case, present and aorist. You actually also get other tenses of participles, we'll come to that um, uh, another time, but for now, just present and aorist. And that means that all of this, 2 times 4, 8 times 3, um, so 24, you're going to have to double that because you're going to have them in the present tense and then all the same things again in the aorist tense. 48 different forms, at least just at this stage, that potentially we've generated simply by saying that they are verbal adjectives. Now that's where the complexity comes from. The complexity of the form of participles comes from the... Uh, fact that there are just so many different varieties of them. But now, okay, a couple of pieces of good news. The first is, these are so unbelievably powerful. Uh, even more powerful than um, infinitives that we were talking about a couple of videos ago. Uh, the New Testament is full of participles, and uh, once you've got your head around them, you really have cracked the kernel of the nut, which is the New Testament. So it's well worth doing. The other good bit of news is, right now, all we're going to consider is masculine nominative participles, which means we're only going to be thinking about uh, sentences in which the participle can attach to the subject, because it will be nominative, and in which the subject is masculine, hence masculine nominative. But we'll consider singular and plural, and we will also consider both uh, or two of the tenses present and aorist participles. And that then leads us on to two things. First, the form of the participle in the masculine nominative. Oh, making a mess of my finger writing on myself. And also, what's the distinction between present and aorist? What's the dis distinction in meaning? So I'm going to finish off this video just to tell you a little bit about those two things um, the other way around. So the first thing, I want to talk about what's the difference between the present and the aorist participle. Well, for that, turn to page 85 if you've got it. You've got a nice little discussion um, there which explains uh, very, very briefly the difference between the aorist and the present participles. I want to elaborate on that a little bit more. Again, going back to this example. So let's um, have uh, go back to this sentence. I'll give you some more of these. Get rid of oh, I can keep the angels in boxes and that. Okay. Um, the man running or the man having woken up. Notice what's going on here. Here we have two actions which could be ascribed to the man. Two participles which we could use uh, we could add to this sentence to uh, function a bit like adjectives telling us something more about the man. The question I've got for you is this. When did these two actions happen in relation to the main verb? There's the main verb. Let's take a look at it. Uh, running, the man saw the angels. Having woken up, the man saw the angels. When do these actions happen in comparison to the main verb? I hope you can see very easily that this one is simultaneous with the main verb. It happens at the same time. Whereas this one happens in sequence with the main verb. In particular, it happens before the main verb. And that, at the most basic level, is the difference between the present and the aorist participles in Greek. The present participle describes an action which happens at the same time as the main verb. Now, as always, these are simplifications at this stage, but it's a very, very, very good and powerful simplification. So get this in your head. Present happens at the same time as the main verb. Come to that in a second, why that's important. Whereas aorist describes an action which happens in sequence with the main verb. It happens before the main verb. 
Now that's easy to remember in a sense, because if you think about it, if you're just using an indicative verb, let's say, normally you use the present to describe something that's happening now, and you use the aorist to describe something that happened in the past. What we do with the participles is that the same kind of principle applies, but it's not when it happens compared to when I'm speaking, it's when it happens compared to the action described by the main verb. And this highlights one of the most important principles, which is so important that it's even got in bold in the middle of page 85 in Duff's book. The participle expresses something or has meaning in relation to the main verb. Once you've translated the main verb, in other words, then you start looking around for participles. And always, in some sense, when the participles are used like this, their meaning will depend upon the meaning of the main verb. That will then generate all kinds of interesting sentences. If the main verb is already in the past tense, and then you have an aorist participle, you have to find a way of expressing that that thing happened even further in the past than the action of the uh, main uh, verb itself. Um, similarly, if you've got something in the future, you might have to play around with it. But the important thing in terms of understanding the meaning Present, oops, present participles describe an action which is simultaneous with the main verb, and aorist describe actions which happen before the main verb. That means now we're in a position where we can look intelligently. Let me just check I'm not missing anything out there, that's all good. We can look intelligently just at the form, and you just need to learn this, okay? And I suggest you learn it in the, the same way we learn everything else by chanting it Luon, Luantes, Lusas, Lusantes. Do notice that this table is laid out a little bit differently from the tables that we've normally been doing when, for example, we've been doing adjectives or nouns where we have singular and plural and then nominative, accusative, genitive, dative, or singular and plural with verbs in its first, second, third person. Yeah, see so that's not one table, that's two I'm describing there. Um, here what we've done is present and aorist in the columns and then singular and plural going down the side describing the rows. But since that's what Duff does, I'm not going to try and rejig all the tables throughout the entire book. And actually there are good reasons for doing it, laying it out this way. But just keep chanting it in your head, Luon, Luantes, Lusas, Lusantes. Bearing in mind, of course, that as ever, there is a degree of logic to it. This is the stem of the verb. Lu, as ever, a simple, regular, short paradigm verb, meaning luo, meaning I and tie, or I loose, I set free, that kind of thing. And the participle in the present singular masculine nominative is luon. The plural, luontes. And then switching to the aorist, here's the logic you'd expect to find, a sigma suffix to distinguish the aorist from the present, lutes, and then as is the ending, and then lus antes. Notice, as ever, the sigma suffix and also the alpha. Aorists have a sigma suffix, and they like alphas in their endings. So, um, elusa, elusas, elusen in the aorist indicative, well, lusas, Lusantes in the aorist masculine nominative singular and plural participle. Um, as I said, this you just need to learn. Um, so, uh, Luon, Luantes, Lusas, Lusantes. And what we're going to do next is we'll come back in the next video and I'm just going to give you some examples of this. And what we'll do is we'll keep referring back to these principles that we've highlighted here. Uh, so, if it helps you, uh, check out the beginning of this video again, excuse me, just to get those ideas in your mind that a participle is a verbal act, adjective. I won't go over all that stuff again. It'll just extend the length of the video. You can watch it if you need to. What we'll do is we'll come back and look at some examples. We'll look then at um, uh, the rest of uh, section uh, 7.4, just putting objects on participles. It's fairly obvious how that would work. And then participles as nouns. As ever, keep working hard. Uh, 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, five or six days a week. And I might get these videos finished and you'll have the New Testament nailed in no time at all. Okay, God bless you and bye for now.